Hi, grade five. Uh, another math lesson today. Today we're doing fractions and number lines. First of all, I hope that all of you had a great weekend, got to spend a lot of time with your family, hopefully got outside, got some exercise, got some fresh air in this beautiful springtime weather. So moving on to fractions and number lines. Now this is going to be similar to what we did the other day with just fractions and fraction strips. So it's just showing, going to be showing a different way to represent fractions and this time so instead of using the fraction strips we're going to be using a number line. So one thing I wanted to point out before we go on is how you're going to notice a number line. Now you have seen number lines before, you may be used to them going up to many different numbers, but when we're using fractions they're only going to go up to one as you can see here because remember that a fraction is a part of a whole so a whole would be one so anytime you're using a number line to represent a fraction it's only going to go to one so this one goes from zero to one and if you see this is divided into four sections just like this fraction strip now I want you to just take a look at this real quickly and see if you can figure out what the fraction this would represent. What is this divided into? So I'm going to give you a second to think about it. And hopefully at home thinking, okay, so this is divided into fourths, because there's one, two, three, four in the strip, one, two, three, four sections in the number line. And you notice this goes from zero up to where the three would be, so it would be three fourths. Both of these the strip and the number line are representing three fourths. So just remember again that anytime you're showing a fraction on a number line, it's going to be going from zero to one. So let's take a look at a couple examples. And it asks, what fraction of the number line is shaded? And again, look, these all go just up to one. So we're doing a fraction. Now the same way when we're counting the boxes, the rectangles on the fraction strip, we're going to count how many sections there are on the number line. That's going to give us our denominator. So one, two, three, four. So it's fourths. And there is one. So that means our fraction is going to be one fourth. For this one, one, two, three, four, five. And we've got two, so two fifths. And here, one, two, three, four, five again. But now we have three shaded in, so three fifths. So we've got one fourth or one quarter, two fifths, and three fifths shaded in there. Okay, so for this next slide here, it's going to ask us to mark an X on the number line to show each fraction. We are given four fractions here, one sixth, six sixths, two sixths, and four sixths. We look at our number line. Again, it, the fractions are labeled here, but this is only going from zero to one. Six sixths, the six parts of six would represent one, one whole. So first we look at one sixth. We look at our number line, find that right there. So we mark an X there. Six sixths, all the way down at the other end. There is that, two sixths right here, and four sixths is right here. So there's an X there, and then you notice, now we're saying less than, so we wanna start at the smallest one. So the smallest one is gonna be all the way, the furthest to the left. As we go to the right, we're getting bigger. So first thing we put there is one sixth, is less than our next number we marked was two sixths, then four sixths, and then six sixths. So one sixth is less than two sixths, is less than four sixths, is less than six sixths. So that's when it's asking you to mark the fraction on the number line, that's how you do that one. Our next slide is just the same 
thing, just an exercise. So use the number line to order the fractions. Draw an X for each fraction. And just by putting it, you will put it in order. This time we have our number line divided into ninths. So again, we're going from zero to one, from zero ninths to nine ninths, which would be one. So from zero to one. So every time, just to reiterate that, that you have a number line representing a fraction, it only goes up to one. So first we have two ninths. So I look for that here. Seven ninths would be down here. Five ninths right there. Eight ninths. One ninth and four ninths. And remember, so as you go to the from left to right, you're getting a bigger piece of the whole. So another way you could say this when you're ordering it is one ninth is less than two ninths, is less than four ninths, is less than five ninths, is less than seven ninths, is less than eight ninths. Eight ninths. So eight ninths will be the biggest fraction here. One ninth is the smallest one that we saw in this example. And here is another example here. Now we've gone to fifths though. We've got five fifths, so we X that right here. Next, three fifths, zero fifths, and two fifths. So zero fifths is less than two fifths, is less than three fifths, is less than five fifths. The further you get to the right on the number line, the bigger the fraction is. So just remember that because that will be helpful when you are comparing your fractions. Okay, so now we have another exercise to do. So it asks us to write a fraction that is between the two fractions. If you notice with all these examples, our denominator is the same. So we've got ninths here, fifths here, fourths and tenths. So that means we don't need to worry about changing the denominator. So we're looking at the numerator. So to find a fraction that's between those two, we want to find a number that's between 3 and 8. Our denominator stays the same, so we're just changing in all of these examples our numerator. So since it's between 3 ninths and 8 ninths, eight ninths, we find a number between 3 and 9. So I could say 4 ninths, 5 ninths, 6 ninths, 7 or 7 ninths. They would all be between 3 ninths and 8 ninths. Same thing here. A fraction between 1 fifth and 5 fifths. Several right answers. I'm going to choose 3 fifths. My denominator stays the same. I'm just changing the numerator to find the fraction that's in the middle. 1 fourth and 3 fourths. This one we only have one possible answer because there's only one number that's going to be between 1 and 3, so it's going to be 2 fourths. Denominator stays the same, just changing the numerator. And between 5 tenths and 8 tenths, so I will just pick 7 tenths, and the other answer you could possibly pick would be 6 so 7 tenths or 6 tenths both will work for that one. All right, let me just erase this and move on to the next slide. Luckily, this lesson is going to be a little bit shorter than the last one, which was kind of long. So Now here, just we're looking again at our fraction strips. And I'm just going to show you just how this, when we're comparing fractions, is similar to how we're comparing fractions using the number line. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's going to be our denominator. And we then count how many sections are shaded. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we've got 4 fifths. And here we've got 4 total, so 4 parts of a whole, and 2 of those are shaded, so two-fourths would be our fraction. And ask which one is greater. Now again, and you can do this with the number line, you see how far, which one goes further to the right, and that'll tell you which one is greater. So I can look, just by looking at this, see this goes way out to here, so this is gonna be a bigger fraction, so four-fifths is gonna be greater than two-fourths. 
And then this next example will just show you how that looks on a number line. So you can use a number line even when you're comparing fractions. You notice these have different denominators. So we can use the number line to compare those. And that shows you this is where 4 fifths would be. This is where 2 fourths would be. As you see, if we only shaded from 0 to 2 fourths, it would end here. But if we shaded all the way out to 4 fifths, it would be here. So that tells you the further you get to the right, the closer you get to 1, the bigger the fraction is. So that will show you that that is a bigger fraction. All right, so we're going to look at this next example. Um, and it says, how many parts is the distance from 0 to 1 divided into? Um, and then to label the fractions. So first thing, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's divided into four parts. When it's asking us to label the fractions, so each of these we're going to make as a fraction. So since it's 4, remember that's going to be our denominator. So that's going to be 1 fourth or 1 quarter. This will be 2 fourths. This will be 3 fourths. This is labeled as 1. You could also label that as 4 fourths. And just like 0, you could label that as 0 fourths. Those are equal. 1 equals 4 fourths. 0 equals 0 fourths. But so that's how we would label the fractions on the number line. Now this one, we've got, you can see more marks, so that means it's going to be divided into smaller pieces, so we count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that tells us we have six. So this one, the first one, one six, two six, three six, four, six, five, six, and one or six, six. I just wanted to point something out here too, that, and we talked about this in the last lesson, how if you have different denominators, different numerators, you can still have equivalent fractions. So if you look at two fourths and three six, and you line those up, you can see that they are at the same spot. So that tells us since they're at the same spot on the number line, the same distance between 0 and 1, they are equal. They are equivalent fractions. So this would be equal, 2 fourths and um, 3 sixths. And that's just what that's saying there. Same thing, 2 fourths, 3 sixths are equal, um, even though they have different numerators and denominators, they can still represent the same fractions, the same number, be equivalent fractions. All right, this is our last one. See, I told you it was going to be quick, so we're almost done with today's lesson. Um, now this one, number one, estimate approximately where the fraction goes by writing a letter above the number line. So this time we've got a number line, and we're dealing with 20ths, but it's not divided into 20 different sections. So but if you look at how it's divided, we've got 0 at one end, 1 on the other end. Because remember, the number line is always going to be just between 0 and 1. We've got one division right in the middle, so that's going to represent half. And you see right here, so that would be a quarter. So you notice it's kind of four different sections. But we're looking, so if something's going in here, it's closer to a half. Something's going here, it's closer to zero. And then this is going to be a number that's greater, or a fraction that's greater than a half, um, but closer to this half. And here, greater than a half, but closer to one. So we look at the first one. Now the way you can kind of figure this out is if you look at the numerator and compare it to the denominator. So I've got 18 and I've got 20. 18 is pretty close to 20. It's only two numbers away. 
So if the numerator and denominator are very close together, that means it's more parts of a whole, it's closer to one. So I look at that and I know it's gonna have to be to the right, somewhere down here, closer to one. So you can see that's where the A is. Now this isn't exact, so it's just approximately where it goes. So that's where A would go, 18 twentieths. Now B, 9 twentieths. Now if I think about this one, I compare 9 and 20, and if I think, what's half of 20? What would this number be? If I say, what's half of 20? So if 20 divided by 2 would be 10. That means 1 half would be 10 twentieths. So since 9 is close to 10, I know that it's going to be close to a half, but it's not greater than a half, right? Because we're looking less than a half or greater than a half. 9 is less than 10, so it's less than a half. But it's going to be close to there because it's close to 10. So I'd say we can put B right about there. Okay, next one. 1 20th. Now we've got a number 1 that's not close to 20 at all. As far away from 20 as we can get besides having 0. So therefore, that's going to tell me that's obviously less than a half. Not closer to a half, though. It's going to be closer to 0. And since it's 1, since it's a small number, it's going to be way down on the left side of the number line. So we say someplace around there. So that would be 1 20th, where we put C. And then finally, the last example, 12 20ths, which again, I compared 12 to 20. Before I had mentioned that 10 would be half, so if we had 10 over 20, it would be half. Kind of close to 10, since it's greater than 10, I know it's going to be greater than 1 half, but closer to 1 half, because it's not that far away from 10. So therefore, I'm going to put it on the number line. I'll put it just to kind of show it's a little bit further away than this B is. Because that was supposed to be a D. So we've got D there, 12 20ths, a little bit further from the half than B is, but greater than 1 half, but not that close to 1. So that is how you represent fractions on a number line. That is, um, hopefully it'll give you an understanding of how you can compare fractions when you show them on the number line. Remember, the further it is to the right, the greater the fraction is going to be because the closer it is to 1. And that is all I have for today's lesson. Um, again, I hope that everyone has a wonderful day. Um, stay, stay safe and um, enjoy some time outside today, hopefully. I'll see you next time.